Hello and welcome. It's Deborah. We're counting down to the April 8th, 2024 total solar eclipse. And I'm here with Jamie Carter of Forbes. Hi, Jamie. Hi, it's lovely to be here. Uh, Jamie, you call yourself the world's only total solar eclipse journalist. So uh, you must be an eclipse chaser. Is that right? I am an eclipse chaser. And there are other people in my industry who are eclipse chasers, but they don't often write as many articles as I do. So I think I've claimed that title. And uh, so so tell tell our audience, what is an eclipse chaser? What's that mean? An eclipse chaser is someone who knows when the next eclipse is, because I think once you've seen a total solar eclipse and you've experienced it, you have to experience it again. And if you have the resources and the time to go to these, the remote corners of the world sometimes to experience the next eclipse, you, you just do, whether you have to borrow money or take a credit card out or, or sleep on someone's floor, you just go anyway. So I think an eclipse chaser really is someone who just knows when the next one is. So how many have you seen? I've been to seven total solar eclipses and um, some annular and partial eclipses as well. So what is it? I mean, what is it that's causing you to have that strong feeling that you've got to get to the next one? Like, what is it about the eclipse? You know, partial eclipses are interesting, but they're not really something you would travel to, to go and see. I, I certainly wouldn't travel across from the UK where I live to the US just to see a partial eclipse. So I think it's it's the total eclipse, which you can only experience within that narrow path of totality. And totality, of course, is when it goes dark, when you can see the eclipse sun, if the weather is clear. And you can see all kinds of beautiful, beautiful phenomena either side of totality. But actually, it's all about looking at the sun and seeing its corona, which is behind me now. I mean, this is a, a processed image. This is not quite what you would see with the naked eye, but it's it's very close to it. And through a pair of binoculars, you certainly would. And it's that's the site that people will travel anywhere to see because it's just not something you can see at any other time. It sounds like it's a visual experience. The the beauty of it, is there a, a feeling that goes with it? Absolutely. The visual is the visual experience is the first thing we think about because you know it's hard not to when you have images like this. But a lot of other things happen it, when it gets dark just before totality. It doesn't just become a dusk slowly like you're you're watching a sunset or, or the aftermath of the sunset. It gets dark in a few seconds. I mean, it happens so quickly. I think the light drop, like the light levels drop by 10,000 times in five or six seconds. I mean, it, it, and that's something that you you just can't experience at any other time. So you get that feeling it's getting cold. Of course, it gets it gets quite chilly during totality. Um, April may be different because it could be chilly in some places anyway, but it will get noticeably cooler wherever you are. And that's quite an addictive Thing to feel but also there are other things animals react strangely as we know i've had experience of this it, uh, over quite a few eclipses uh, and i would include in in that people uh, people are the weirdest animals of course and they do the weirdest things and um, i've usually experienced a totality in a in a, a reasonably big group of people because i think it's an interesting place to look at people's reactions um, so yeah, that's that's just as interesting as, as seeing the eclipse sun. The whole experience is just bizarre. The whole the whole few hours of the eclipse, really, but especially those those few minutes in the middle when people do crazy things and say crazy things. The uh, eclipse of April or not April, October fourteenth, twenty twenty three, passed over Austin uh, as a about a ninety five or so percent partial eclipse. So it got it didn't quite become it was an annular but it didn't quite reach the annularity, but it did was a very deep partial eclipse. And that was the same feeling I had, that it was very eerie. It was an, like an eerie feeling. And you can imagine what it must have felt like for people in early times who didn't know that was coming. And suddenly that eerie thing started to happen and it started to get darker and darker. 
I can totally imagine people being terrified about that. Oh, yeah. You, there's a primeval feeling sometimes when that the sun disappears and it gets cold. And you sometimes get a wind as well, like an eclipse wind. And it feels like the end of days or something. And I know some people, they get a, they get something in their stomach. They get a knot in their stomach where they just, they know the sun's going to come back. They've, but they, they just don't believe it within themselves. And it can be quite a shocking experience to some people. Um, so how about the travel itself? Do you have a favorite eclipse story? My favorite is an eclipse that happened, a total eclipse that happened in Chile in July 2019 when I was I was actually leading a tour group. We were in a hotel in a valley in uh, in Chile. And um, just as totality started, we realized we were surrounded by parakeets in, in the trees. And the parakeets went crazy. I mean, as it got dark, they started screaming. It was incredible. A, a police car put its siren on just outside the hotel, just for a laugh, I guess. But it added to it. There was a big sense of drama at that eclipse that I hadn't really expected. And those those parakeets, they screamed the, the whole time, all, you know, for two or three minutes. Wow, that sounds that sounds really great. Um, so what's your advice for a first time eclipse goer? First time eclipse goer, uh, the golden rule, of course, is you must get into the path of totality. I know anecdotally that lots of people in the 2017 eclipse traveled to get closer to the path without actually getting there. So maybe they left, um, they left their town and they drove for two hours to make their partial eclipse that perhaps was 60% at home. They drove two hours, so it was it was 70 or 80%. And that just shows a complete misunderstanding of the path of totality. It, you know, the, the, the clue is total. You, it's, it's, it's everything. It's completely what the eclipse is about. It's, you, you watch a partial eclipse and it's not the same thing at all. So you must get into the path. Secondly, I guess, don't try and photograph it if it's your first one. The the thing I um, remember from from my first eclipse is is audio. Actually, um, somebody filmed a video. They didn't. They weren't attending to it. They they put something on a tripod and just filmed a video. And the video is not good. You know, it was years ago. The the quality is terrible. You can't really see much. But it captured the audio of of me watching my first eclipse and that and that is priceless because it's the things you say and the things around you the things that people around you say and um and, and if you're lucky the sounds of animals and birds or whatever is around you those are the things that actually trigger memories a lot more than uh, a close-up of, of an eclipse sun that probably isn't as good as one from nasa will take anyway 